What's up, everybody? This is Cheeky CP, one of the hosts in Three Beats Later. Um, this is episode two of our series called Very Dope Producers. And I am joined today, none other than the magnificent Marcus Elbow uh, from Elbow Media Studios. So Marcus, what's up? How you doing? Thanks for joining me today. I'm good, man. What's good with you, bro, bro? Thank you <laughs> for having me on, man. That's what's up. So just um, if this is your first time watching, this is a series really all about dope producers who are, are doing their thing, uh, making music, building community. Um, and this is episode number two. So here we go. I, I have one of the producers on who really helped uh, inspire me kind of get back into music production. So Marcus, just to kind of give you some background, I've been playing music my whole life. I'm a guitar player, uh, play a little bit of bass now. I've been playing in bands forever. Okay. When I was a young, young lad, I, for about four years, I was in a hip hop band and I also did some hip hop production. And then uh, I moved out of uh, where I'm from, Buffalo, New York, and kind of went down to the DMV area and okay. didn't do any hip hop production for a while. It was all songwriting, playing all different types of music, world music, you name it. Yeah. And in the last year and a half, I got back into it. And one of the people that really inspired me to just do more as much as I could, especially on an iPad, was you and specifically your tutorials. So first off, I have to say thank you. Um, and second off, I have to say, you know, continue to do what you're doing because what you're doing is amazing. So thank you. Thank you. the reason I wanted to have this conversation is I wanted to really just... Um, you know, shine a light on what you're doing, your community that you're building, your live stream, and get a chance to kind of learn a little bit about, you know, your background, your bio. So we're going to do some 101 questions up front. And um, it's, you know, here comes the softball questions. I just want to learn a little bit about your background. So Houston, born and yep. raised? Face town, baby, all day. You know what I'm saying? Uh, went to Atlanta a little while, but didn't stay long. Found out my wife was pregnant, had to shoot back home. Uh, went to LA, did some stuff in LA for a little while, and then okay. uh, went into the went into the being a father business. Yes, you I'm... know what I'm saying. So, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I I've been doing music since I was 14. I started DJing. Um, that was crazy because I was doing shows and DJ. I was DJing everywhere. I yeah. didn't care where I went. I, I wanted to be the best DJ in the world. Uh, then I found, uh, I, I went to a music store to buy some equipment and the guy was doing a beat on the keyboard. And I didn't even know you can do that. It was an ASR 10. And I fell in love with uh, the process of what he was doing. So I started producing. Uh, I think I was uh, 19, 20. Uh, and I sold my first beat at 21 and I was addicted. Uh, I just okay. figured this is what I wanted to do uh, for the rest of my life. It didn't turn out that way, but you know, hey. Yeah. yeah. Some people get it. Some people don't. You know how this business go. Absolutely. So, so you sold your beat at, at, at the age of what? what was your first beat? 21? 21. Yeah. I sold my first beat at 21. What was the, what was the transaction like back then? Oh, it was ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's not get it twisted. Uh, I wasn't trying to get no points. I wasn't no placements. You know, all this stuff these kids talk about these days. I was trying to put some bread on meat on the table. So, yes. Yes. Uh, you know, that was, you know, I was talking to somebody, uh, one of my colleagues about how it was in the nineties versus how it is now. There's so much information available now. And so many, yeah. uh, so much access to books and things for you to, to learn. That's what my goal is in 2021, as you may have heard in the stream last night, yeah. is to educate my community as far as Absolutely. what you need to do as far as selling beats, because you get into this habit, especially now when people selling beats for $20, I don't understand that. I never, I will. don't get it. Yeah. Uh, I don't get but it. Uh, it is a lot of information out there for you to be able to, everybody's not going to get placements, but at least, ensure that if you sell your music to someone and they do happen to do something with it you will have a digital footprint so if it's played somewhere you will get paid you will get royalties and yeah you, will get, uh, you know you will get compensated so uh, mm -hmm. back then we wasn't talking about that back then mm -hmm. uh, i was living in the hood and a lot of cats was rapping i was rapping we had a group and uh cats come by they buy beats i sell it to them for you know five six hundred dollars thousand dollars whatever yeah i'll see you later do what you do you right know what I mean? yeah, so, yeah yeah <laughs> it was it was it was the numbers i figured if i sell you know 30 beats a month or 15 beats majority of the cats wasn't going to be able to get to it because they couldn't get in the studio it right it costs money to do these things so right uh i don't think any of my beats really just exploded like that because people didn't have access but you know if it did hey 
more, more, hey, big up to him. You know yeah, what I'm somewhere, yeah. somewhere, yeah. someone is, did something with one of your beats. Yeah, yeah, you. Know, I, well, I did some stuff for a few people. I don't really talk a lot about it. Like I was yeah. telling you before, that's the past. It's been over twenty years. You know, mm-hmm. eight years since I really fully quit, and I've been back for about a year and a half. So my movement is about bettering the producers now and and yeah. producing, getting back to doing what I love to do. That's my main goal. So I, you know, I was mentioning that, you know, back when we were selling beats, it was 2002. And, you know, it was very much, we thought, you know, I had a kind of like a production crew and we thought we were the shit because we, you know, we, we understood what the term like non-exclusive meant, you know what I mean? So we were walking around thinking we were official because we were trying to sell non-exclusive beats. And, you know, we had like fake, fake ass contracts, like, <laughs> you know, like, Hey, you know, yeah. our, our idea was to try to do what is so available nowadays, you know, via BeatStars and the, the different marketplaces that you can put your beats on. Yeah. Um, but we, you know, we didn't really truly know enough. And even today, you know, things are so confusing, I think, to really any independent artist, yeah. uh, especially beat makers, you know, register to this, register to this, register to this, do that, you know, and there's yeah. so much that involves just data. And all that that it could get confusing and back then you know we were even more confused too about what 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 the direct route to making money was back in the day well hopefully uh in, in this this year we're going to be able to clear some of that stuff up uh, that's going to be one of my main goals this year is to not only you know gain knowledge for myself but also yeah to share that knowledge and to get some of this confusion and some of this riffraff out the way, out the way. clear a path yeah. so producers can have a clear cut idea of what they're supposed to get and what they, yeah. you know, or do. So, Because there could be, there's so many different avenues too that I think that that's what kind of uh, cloud, you know, makes it a little bit cloudy is that somebody could want to get their music on, you know, television, somebody could want to get their music just sold, sell the beats. And I think that that's what makes like the, the lane a little bit tougher because there's a lot of different forks that you could take. But um, back to back to your your bio, I want to kind of dig in a little bit further. Um, so, what brought you to to DJ in the first place? I mean, was there any specific yeah. artists that were you know influential to you back then? Of course, of course, I followed. Uh, well, uh, story was I was watching MTV Yo Rap, so I just told y'all how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, and and Fresh Prince and Jazzy Jeff, uh, I don't remember what song it was. Um, they were they were on, and of course I saw DJ Jazzy Jeff scratching, and it just looked technical. I was I've been always been a technical person. Yeah, uh, I went to school for information technology, so okay. as far as just anything that's got anything to do with tech, I'm I'm about it. And when I seen them scratching, I was like, yo, that looked dope. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Wonder what it's gonna take for me to, to to figure that out. So I just jumped out my house, jumped on my bike, uh, and rolled down to the local uh, radio shack and asked the guy, "Hey, dude, how do I become a DJ?" Wow. And he, and he laughed, but he was like, "All right, we got some mixes over there. You know what I mean? Uh, you yeah. want to buy a mixer? Go check it out." I looked, I saw how much it cost. Don't remember. It could have been 150, whatever. Uh, and I worked my tail off that summer and I bought me a mixer. But once I bought the mixer, I didn't have a record player. So I was like, OK, uh, yeah. well, I need a record player. So anyway, uh, Jazzy Jeff, uh, I follow him. Uh, you know, I don't reach out to him or nothing, but I follow his live streams and I watch him. And, and you know, as you can see off to my left shoulder, I got a deck behind me. So okay. uh, it's, it's something that I've always loved to do. You know what I mean? And then so from like I said, from there, I started producing from there. So so back in the day, it was vinyl, though, right? You were, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. How about how have things changed? Do you still uh, rock with vinyl or now it's all just those digital uh, tables nah, now, right? I got vinyl, but I do it all, though. Again, remember, I'm a, I'm a nerd. So, yeah, uh, but I got records all behind me. I mean, they're all over the place. So I still like to dig in the crates. You know what I mean? There's something about vinyl that you just can't get it anywhere else. Can't be emulated. You know what I mean? So right. uh, you got to go there sometimes. But, you know, again, it's so much material out there. You, you got to be creative these days. Uh, I try to tell that to the community as much as possible. Don't limit yourself. Don't think that, you know, just because it was done like this, that's the, the you know, the golden rules. That, right. You got to do it this way. You don't have to do it. You got to do it the way you feel it. You know what I mean? What right. comes to your heart, where your creativity takes you. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty dope, especially the way decks are these days. I mean, uh, DJing these days is, say, bro, they look like cyborgs. You know what oh, I mean? Man. It's crazy. It's crazy. So yeah. I can't I bought, even do some of them tricks. So it's crazy. I bought one of those small little new marks, the small okay. that play like, they actually play the, the full size vinyl, but 
I started just trying to teach myself how to, to scratch. And uh, that is really, really tough. Oh. Um, I mean, just because I did it when I was young don't mean as soon as I got my deck, I was back on it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it ain't like riding a bike. Don't ever let nobody tell you that. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I had to practice and, and I had to get back okay with it. I'm still not good. That's why I yeah. haven't been anything on my channel with it because I haven't got to where I want to be. But, you know, practice makes, you know, makes progress. So. I didn't even know what um what scratch vinyl was until about a year ago. Like, I didn't know that you you could buy vinyl just specifically made for scratching. Like to oh. me, in my head, I'm thinking like you're just scratching everything, you know what I mean? But then, yeah, yeah that that was like a mind blower for me. If what about- think, uh, think about me, I'm sorry. I don't I don't even oh, scratch it. vinyl though. Uh, I scratch, uh, my, my deck is digital, so- Yeah, that's, uh, see, that's the way to go, to, man. Yeah, but it has uh, a rotating, you know what I mean? Uh, table, yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, so it's a denim uh, 5000, DJ 5000. So it's pretty dope, you know what yeah. I'm saying? You know, it takes some getting used to, but it still feels like vinyl. It right. Like vinyl feel, so. Yeah, that's the next step. I mean, I heard you talking about this yesterday about um, getting kicked out the house and. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's inevitable. I think the next purchase over here is going to be uh, one of those decks. I have to whisper that. Yeah, right. You know, <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, I love it. The crazy thing about it, though, she actually, my wife bought that for my uh, for my birthday. Uh, I had been talking about getting back into DJing and I looked at a couple of controllers, but what I didn't want is I didn't want to have the computer and the controller kind of, you know, duo yeah. because I got too much stuff in my studio. It just, I didn't want to do that. So I went with decks that already had a processor and a computer on them, yeah. uh, which costs a lot of money, but right. uh, it's very, very cool. I can, I can actually stream from, from title directly to my decks. So it's pretty dope. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so you're making a, you, you, you start with DJing, then all of a sudden you learn about beat making, you go down, uh, someone teaches you that you could actually make a beat using a keyboard. Mm -hmm. What is in your first venture into making a beat? Was it, how can you describe that is, was it on hardware? Was it on software? And what is the gear that you're using back then? It was all, it was all hardware. I mean, yeah. I didn't have a computer or none of that. I mean, that, that wasn't what it was. But funny thing is, uh, I saw the keyboard, but I didn't get it that day. I was broke. Uh, what what I did do was I went and got me a little the Rink of Dink Casio. And I had, a, um, I think I had a Tascam 4-track I found somewhere uh, at a pawn shop or something. And uh, I had a, dream, a drum machine. I had an Alyssa's drum machine. And I started that way. I started sampling. Uh, I would sample stuff straight. Like I would play it, sample it with the Casio, and then play it back, record it to the Tascam. So I had very, very humble beginnings. Uh, right. And then when I saved enough money, I bought the ASR-10, and it just it blew my mind. Uh, yeah. Going from that small level to being able to have discs and, and sounds and being able to network because he back then you used to have to know somebody that had sounds you know what i mean okay you can go to guitar center and say hey let me buy a plethora of sounds so hey you got a sound pack djs didn't uh producers didn't give people their their sounds okay. wasn't none of that going on everybody kept that to their heart <laughs> they wanted to have their own sound right. which you know today you know it's a little bit different you know yeah. With, uh, you know, with stuff like Splice and all that, and it has made it a little bit more, uh, everybody kind of has the same kind of sounds, and they're trying to fight for and jostle for that sound. Yeah. But back then, we didn't do that. Or you just made the sounds yourself, or you just sampled from somebody's beat, or Dre, or you took Dre Kit and his, you took his kick, and you took his uh, snare, and it had a little bit of hi-hat in there, but you just did what you could do. And yeah. that was, that's what's the boom bap creative days you know right. what i mean but uh it was it was it was wonderful that's that's how i started out man on the sr10 and i bought the ts12 uh and ts12 was a full flesh 88 key keyboard that came with sounds on it and i fell in love with that i actually love that more than i love the sr10 uh -huh. because i kind of really didn't want to do sampling anymore because remember i started with the casio so i always yeah. felt like you know sampling was kind of not cheating but you know from the south so i'm not from up north you know up north yeah East yeah Coast. That was their sound, you know what I mean? Right. South was doing a lot of bass playing. We had cats like Gumbo Joe and, and cats like that that was doing beats down here, and it was all bass heavy. Yeah. So I was trying to find my own way with my own sound. And Dre, Dre is one of the, the my idols. I mean, I had him on my wall. Yeah. And I had written under there. One day I'm gonna be better than you. That was mm -hmm. my motivator. Uh, so when I got to TS12, I had my own sounds. I started making my own beats. But then you know we ran into this thing in the '90s where if you had a Triton 
Everybody was using the Triton. Triton right? yep. you had a Phantom. Everybody was using the Phantom sound. If you had a yeah. TS-12, this, that, and the third. So it became a thing now is everybody trying to get that next, you know, that next keyboard that ain't nobody using. So the motif came, oh, I'm going to get that. You know what I mean? So yep. uh, when the computer game came and then now we have stuff like Reason where you can yep. actually get sounds that you can get from anywhere yeah. that changed the game. It, it was, it was, oh man, it was unbelievable. So that's, you're hitting on kind of my experience too, because, you know, I got into music production uh, when I went to a music school for a little bit, like I for about a year and everybody had to, everyone that was doing music production was using a Triton. Okay. Yeah. I and, and then, um, at school, everyone was passing around a pirated version of Reason. Like, I don't know, 2002, this could have been the second version of Reason. Like it was Reason 2.0 or something like that. Yeah. And I started, you know, using Reason and using a computer and trying to tweak as much as I could out of just using that DAW, essentially. So a lot of the people who had like the actual business opportunities were the people who were using Tritons at the time. Yeah. You know, um, so that's kind of like the the time time stamp. I'm, I might be dating myself as well, but um, yeah, 2002 so, Tritons and Reason. Reason yeah. 1.0 or 2.0. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I actually, uh, funny thing for me is when I, when I first saw Reason, first I saw Fruity Loops and I did not like it. I thought that the sound was way too clean. I come from the analog background. For, so for me, it mm -hmm. just sounded uh, very, you know, just too, too good, too clean, too digital. You know what yeah. I mean? So I shied away from it. I saw Reason. Uh, you know, Reason looked better because I, I worked in a studio environment. So okay. I like the way you could flip it and then you can do some patch stuff. I saw the I saw the potential in right. that. Uh so uh but it was it was hard fought. I think I got into reason around reason three. Uh I don't okay. think I was on right right in the beginning because I had a role in sixteen eighty and I did have the TS twelve and, and I had the ASR ten, so I had the capability of doing my own thing so i didn't I, I was doing all of it kind of hardware you know yeah. what I'm no software uh but then i bought a laptop and then i got reason and then there it goes you there know goes. Uh, yeah i was i was i was hooked because i had so many sounds that i had uh, accumulated that i was able to transfer to the computer and uh and get from other places uh and it became crazy you know i've never had you know, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 sounds before. Right. So when I started feeling that, I felt like Superman. I felt like it wasn't anything I couldn't do because I had all the tools to be able to do what I needed to do. So right. it was amazing. So can you tell me a little bit more about, um, a little bit more about your background in Houston specifically? Um, specifically the scene, you know, I don't know if there was, um, you know, any specific groups that were kind of um, doing their thing back in the day or studios, you know, my experience in making hip hop was there was always like one or two studios that was affordable enough for, you know, a lot of the hip hop heads to go to and, and try to like get in the studio and get some studio time. But in Houston, I mean, I don't know enough about, you know, the Houston uh, hip hop scene other than the artists that you could think of off the top of your head, right? You know, yeah, I mean, yeah, you had Ghetto you Boys, know. Barface, you had Suave House. I mean, um, yeah, Kiki and them, and they were doing their thing, a little Kiki. So, I mean, we had groups down here. We had we had big time studios. I mean, in '97, uh, we recorded our first album. Uh, we did uh, some stuff at Uptown. This was like a big studio. Uh, mm -hmm. We spent a lot of money, stupid amount of money. Um, and then that's what sent us off to California. But uh, yeah, the scene was pretty much Scarface, Ghetto Boys, yeah, uh, UGK. Um, you know, that was the that was the front runners. You know, you had a, some local groups, uh, which were, were good. You know, South okay. Circle. Uh, you had South Circle. You had D for Life. You had a lot of groups that were good that I sold beats to because they were local, small right. uh, groups. But uh, yeah, it wasn't that much. You know what I'm saying? I mean, H Town, the the singing group was kind of hot, uh, but yeah, as far as hip hop, if you weren't listening to, to you know, if you wasn't rap a lot, then you better move out of the way because rap a lot gonna gonna brush you out of the way and bust your head. <laughs> and they kind of cornered the market on us back then, so it was it was a little crazy, you yeah. know. But that's that was the life. You had to get you if you couldn't do it with them or you couldn't do it with Swap House, you had to get out and do it somewhere else. So that's why I kind of shout out to Atlanta, yeah, for a while and then came back. So um, you share with me that, you know, you, you kind of had a, um, like an eight year um, hiatus, hiatus, 
Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I kind of have a similar experience. Like I would say it was even at least uh, 14 years, roughly just. I, I may be sugarcoating that. It may have been longer. <laughs> um, but I noticed, you know, you know, all the things that kind of I dreamt about in terms of mu making music and producing hip hop. And I thought that would happen in the future. You know, I kind of lost sight of when I was playing in bands. And then I come back, let's just say like a year and a half ago. And I was kind of just blown away with how much is at a producer's fingertips. So that would be kind of like my next question is, you know, you take a hiatus and then you kind of come back to music production. Um, can you explain what brought you back? And, mm -hmm. and after you kind of jump back into it, you know, what were some of the big things that you saw being different after that, that hiatus? Um, when I came back, well, I guess the reason it was probably longer than eight years, but I guess I came back and did an album. Uh, I did an album in 2014 and I had did, a, I had a record label and I did some things in there, but I don't, you know, again, that was me just trying to hold on uh, to the passion I have for music. Right. Um, when I stepped away and came back, like I said, it was, uh, it was about a year, a year and a half ago. Uh, I think that's how long this channel has been going on. And I was, I was at a, I was at a stalemate. I, I had started a YouTube channel in 2008. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you went back and looked at some of my older stuff, but I, I started out with Reason, Teaching Reason in 2008. It did good. It mm -hmm. actually did so good that it scared me because I did not have time to do it. And I, I couldn't foresee YouTube doing what it did. I should have, but I was so focused on my family that I, right. I wasn't trying to see it. I put blinders on. I was just trying to find something to do on Saturday. So I right. started doing these view, uh, Reason videos, Teaching Reason, and I got a thousand subscribers like that. And I was like, whoa, hold on. This is, <laughs> you know what I mean? Then I started getting emails and requests for people for me to do tutorials. And at the time, I wasn't doing any camera. I was just doing screen recording. So I stepped away from that, started a record label. That didn't work. Stepped away from it totally. Still had my studio set up. It wasn't like this, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it was just at a, on a wall with some speakers and monitors. And then I, I, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I wanted to do a podcast. I had a buddy of mine that didn't work out. And uh, I was just sitting up and I was like, what am I going to do? I, I want to get back into music, but I don't want to do it with Reason because Reason had got, it got, it got a little stale. Right. Uh, they had stuff that came out, Ableton Logic, uh, Studio One. I mean, it was so much stuff out there. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know where to start. But I was like, man, this is a lot going on. Where do you go? Then I watched the video. Uh, it was Brandon Rico. Uh, it was Bolo, one of those guys. Mm -hmm. And I saw them making beats on the iPad. And I could not believe it because I had two iPads, 12.9, that I was just watching Netflix on. Yeah. And I'm like, ain't no way that's for real. <laughs> They're playing. So I got it. It's $20, whatever. Let me buy it. Let me look at it. So I bought it and I looked at it. Now, you got to remember, I've been doing music for years. So yeah. I got a clear understanding about architecture and how right. things work. So I'm looking at this app, Beatmaker 3, and I'm saying to myself, this is Amazing. Amazing. This is real. This is not something that your kid can play with. This is music making on a portable device that you could take anywhere, mm. plug in some headphones, and you can start making music. I messed around with it for two days and I was sold. Mm -hmm. And I felt that this was going to be the vehicle that I was going to jump into and ride uh, my, my YouTube journey out. And yeah. I, didn't, I didn't think that I was going to do all iOS. What I was thinking was uh, this was going to was going to kickstart my motivation. This wasn't right. about what I was delivering. It was about me being motivated to do it, because that's really what was holding me back was myself. So once I got into it and I started teaching it, man, and it went crazy, like people were just and to be honest with you, I always kind of knew I had a thing for teaching. Mm -hmm. I started in 08, mm -hmm. but I got more serious about it, you know, a year ago, a year and a half ago. And when I start kind of getting into the rhythm, people was loving it. They were like, man, the way you teach is amazing. You make it so simple. You're not you're not talking a lot about mm -hmm. things that ain't got nothing to do with what you're doing. You just get straight to the point. And I knew how I wanted to do it because I also draw as well. And I, I watch I watched videos with people that was drawing on the iPad. Mm -hmm. So I knew how I wanted to make it look because I saw how they made it look and I yeah. loved the way they made it look. So I said, mm -hmm. hey, what if I did that but did beats? Yeah. You know, and show people how to work that. And uh, so I, I bought some lights and did some different things, had to do some research. And uh, hey, look where it's at now. Yeah. I, told me a year and a half ago, I'll be almost at 7,000. 
<laughs> Come on, bro. I ain't got time for that. Stop playing. Well, I was I was definitely one of those uh, those fans, especially of the Beatmaker Three uh, app and those tutorials. That that's kind of what brought me into your world and your community. And that's a good um, segue because um, every Saturday night, and you know, as 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 of right now, it is Saturday nights. Um, Marcus does a stream, and I want to dig into that. I want uh, you know you to kind of give an intro for what your stream is for anybody who has never jumped on. First off, you got to jump on. Second off, you gotta be in the chat. Yeah, it's uh, fun. And and third off, you'll get to see Marcus's uh, you know flavor of teaching, as he just mentioned. Which and I gotta kind of give you a side compliment. One of the things that I like is that you are making it like really uh, easy to understand, but it's also it's live. When you you know it's really genuine. So when you make a, a mess up and you like might hit a snare where you don't want it, you're going back and you're racing. Everyone's you know. No one's, you know, there's, I think in YouTube, you see too much, um, too many people are trying to kind of like hide mistakes. Of course. You know what I mean? And I think that one of the things that you find in your stream is that, hey, this is making music. You're going to try something out. It might not work. It might work. You know what I mean? Yeah. But anyway, so yeah, kick, kick it off. Let me know. Let the world know of all the people who have yet to subscribe and yet to join the stream. What is your, uh, what is your Saturday night stream about? Uh, it started out, uh, it started out about me um, wanting to do what you just said. I wanted to make it real. Uh, I, I'm not going to sit up here and act like I don't edit either. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> you, know, when, you know, when you're, first of all, my whole thing about, because I've done a few beat making videos, I don't do a ton, but I've done some that did well. And it does kind of look like it's kind of seamless. It's like, damn, yeah. eat, you know what I mean? Like, right. But it's not, you know what I'm saying? My thing when I started it was I want to cut out some of the fluff. I don't like, I, well, I think I'm changing my frame of mind about what I'm about to say. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't like, I don't like watching people make beats. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the finished product. Mm -hmm. I like some of the drum programming, some of the chord playing, but it can get for me, I guess, cause I'm a producer. I kind of mm -hmm. get a little bored, you know okay. what I mean? Yeah. So, I've always in my brain when I started making the videos, I was like, I'm going to take the boring part out. You know, mm. let's just do the fun part. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Show a little bit of the search process because it's a lot of searching for sounds. We already know that if you're a producer, uh, that's sometimes that could take forever, oh, you yeah. know, especially if you got too many sounds. It's a curse and a blessing. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Because if you got 50,000 sounds, good luck. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? So I'll try to eliminate some of that part and just kind of. You know, and then I was thinking too, I'm gonna do tutorials as I make the beats, mm -hmm. so that you every time I do it, it's gonna be like you just seeing it for the first time. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, he's showing me how he's going through here and he's doing that. But I said, you know what, that ain't working. I want it to be even more real than that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I want to do tutorials live, and I want to give people a little bit more of my personality right. uh, because I can be a funny guy. You know what I mean? At least that's what my wife tell me. Uh -huh. uh, you know what I mean? So. I figured when I started doing the streams, people would see the the real me because I'm not gonna lie, when you're teaching, you're not trying to be too funny. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to not waste people's time. So you're right. trying to get straight to the point. You aren't trying to teach what you're trying to teach, and then you get you get up out of there. The streams is about me chopping it up with my community, mm -hmm. having them really do QA's live right there. They can ask questions, we can talk about apps. Uh every time I'm not gonna do a beat, every time I'm not gonna do a tutorial, it all depends on the mood. The stream we did Saturday, we talked about all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I let a beat play for an hour. Yep. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it wasn't about that. It was about the flow of the stream. You know, mm. we, we got it going. Big Baby was having some issues as well, which we just worked out today. Mm. And, uh, you know, so the streams is about connecting. You yep. know what I mean? It's about connecting. And for the most part, uh, besides the health issues I ran into last year, we were on a roll. Uh, mm. And now we're starting to get back on a roll. And uh, my goal is to have, you know, as many people as possible that's a part of the community uh, join. Uh, yep. so, and talk and chat and, and not be afraid to say, hey, man, you know, what's an 808, you know, mm -hmm. or what's quantize or, exactly. you know, what's time signature? Like, mm -hmm. talk to us, let, talk to us and, and let's interact because really it's about them. You know, it ain't too many creators out here putting themselves out there like that. Right. Because it's, it's scary. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's scary going live and, and letting people see the real you 
and saying, okay, he, he can do beats, but he makes mistakes just like me. He's not perfect. Mm -hmm. Like you just said, you know what I'm saying? And beat maker two weeks ago, beat maker crashed on me three times back. Uh -oh. And I was on, I was on that. And I don't know if we should yeah. talk about this, but I felt your pain, man. I know you were frustrated that when that. Well, I was very frustrated, <laughs> and, and I'm I'm not the type to, uh, you know, what I'm saying I, I'm I'm gonna let him know, you know. But see, I, I kind of got a little baby relationship with Intuit. Okay. Uh, and a couple of more uh, develops out there, and, and like D1, you know, I, I have ragged on D1 time and time again because I like the app. Yeah. If I like your app, I'm a, I'm gonna talk about it because it's frustrating when you're trying to use something that that you want to create with and it keeps failing on you yeah true enough matthew with audio kit got back to me and he was like hey we're working on a new code that code is old yeah. we're gonna put a new code in and it's gonna be a little bit better i can appreciate that yeah you know I mean? it lets me know first of all that you're listening second of all you're looking at the stream because you understand that the community means a lot to me second of all that i want to be an ambassador for what you guys are trying to do and they get a lot of value out of this because it's i mean honestly even if you you know with beatmaker 3 specifically like it's amazing a hundred percent. Yes. It is. Um, and even if you are beta testing it essentially live, because that's kind of what is happening, yeah. you know, you might run into some glitches or whatever, and they get that data live. You know yeah. what I mean? Like they, they would otherwise, you know, companies like Intua will pay beta testers to go mm -hmm. through their software and make sure that it is, you know, yeah. uh, perfect. So when, when you, you know, I know how it is with BaitMaker 3 because it's crashed on me a couple of times, especially when you try to use some plugins, right? That's the number one thing, right? Yeah. Um, but the thing that I think is so amazing about it is that they can be, if they had a desktop version of BaitMaker 3, you know, running on a, on a, a Mac or a PC that has like loaded with RAM, I mean, what they are doing in that app is in, like, I, I can't find anything else that can do the time stretching do no. the, the immediate quantization, yeah. making a beat uh, and using 64th note, 32nd notes and have that all lay out in real time. It's, it's wild. Right. Yeah. I but, agree. um, but uh, yeah, not to, not to get in. I know I got a little tangent there, but no, 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 no. Hey, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, I'm passionate about it just like you. So, <laughs> you know, we could, we can talk for hours about it because I am uh, again, when you 80%, I'm trying to get that percentage down, but 80% of my, my stuff is iOS right yep. now. Okay. Uh, like I said, I'm transitioning now, but, uh, so this is what I talk about. You know, yep. people email me, they, they, you know, comments, questions, and, um, I want to be able to answer those questions, uh, as, as clearly and, and as precise as possible. So that's why I reach out to the devs and try to get them to make, uh, to try to make me understand, you know, what what is it is it processing power is it yeah is it the ipad like my 2015 ipad i love it you mm -hmm. may have seen me kid about it big uh, uh big baby said i need to go ahead and use my 2018 which i got it back there but i'm using it for uh i'm i'm, I'm testing some uh using it as a sound module and uh i just want to use that I, I love this you know what i'm saying i love having the sound you know uh the ear the ear plug the uh, headphone jack i love it you know what i'm saying yeah, and I, yeah. I love having a clutter free uh desk I don't know if you've seen it, but I'm, I could be a pretty clean person. So my wife can be a little, uh, she gets a little mad at me about how uh, anal I am when it comes to uh, uh, minimalistic and being very clean and taking care of your equipment. Uh, but I don't like a lot of wires hanging around. And it seems as if if I go to that setup, I'm going to have a little bit more wires than I would like to have on my desk. But uh, it's, it's inevitable. I'm yeah. going to have to go to it. So I might just buy me a 2019, uh, I'm sorry, 2020 yeah. or 2021 iPad. And then we're going to have a different looking setup here. Um, so tell me a little bit more about the stream you have. How many, you have a lot of subscribers, 6,000 subscribers, roughly. I'm just not, yeah. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but um, how much talent is out there in, 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 uh, in your community? Because in the chat, I see a lot of producers in mm -hmm. your chat. Yep. Um, I mean, have have any of the community kind of reached out to you and shared some of the music that they're working on? Or oh, of course, of course. Uh, about seven months ago, I did this thing where I was saying, "Send me some beats," and I would play them uh, in my tutorials. Uh, unfortunately, uh, some beats were being sent to me that had some copyright stuff. Mm, uh, okay, that wasn't uh, cleared, so yeah. I had to get away from that. Uh, but the community is super talented, and and again, it's a lot of you know, it's a lot of youngers, young young guys, but it's a lot of guys our age as well. 
You know yep. what I mean? You gotta understand that this iOS thing is a rebirth uh, for some of us because it's, it's exciting. Oh you yeah, know? and it's different than what we're used to. But yeah, it's a lot of talented, uh, a lot of talented producers out there, man. And I got some stuff planned. I can't really talk about it uh, this year. I can't talk about it right now, but I have some stuff planned that's going to open up the community uh, to be able to give me or give them the opportunity to make some money, give me the opportunity to set up a way that I could get them some uh, exposure. Yep. Uh, for their music again mm. you're not gonna every stream you're gonna hear me talking about get your beats off your hard drive yep i don't want that to happen i don't want to see that happening so i'm not i'm not just wasting breath and, and talking uh we're, we got some stuff that i'm working on right now and uh when i finish it up uh, it's gonna take me a few months to get it locked down uh, but we're gonna start putting some money in some of these producers pockets and we're gonna start setting them up for uh the future so that they can start making some money off of the stuff they're doing uh, so it's going to be pretty dope. That's exactly what I want to kind of uh, talk about a little bit is just the the business side of things. So, yeah. you know, I hear you talking about this a little bit on your stream um, and it sounds you sound very much like me when I'm talking to my musician friends, mm -hmm. because um, I think for a long time playing in bands, you know, you're you're making money, right? You're going out, you're performing live, you're getting the paycheck, you go home, whatever, and, and you get to play music. Yeah. Nowadays, I know so many talented musicians who have yet to really put their full feet into the world of fully producing music from their home studio, right? And I have a lot of conversations where I feel that I talk to musicians who have music on their hard drive if they are, if they do have a home studio, yeah. or they're only going to make music for somebody who needs, you know, them to play a sax line or something like that. And that's the, the one day paycheck that they get. Yeah. And there's kind of a hesitation for people to kind of fully understand all of the the ways they can make money from their music. Mm -hmm. So I find myself talking to a lot of my friends in my community and asking or trying to like, you know, be the advocate to say, hey, let's all work together to get our music out there, to sell music, to try to get our music on, you know, television and, and video and all that stuff. Yeah. And I'm not getting any younger. <laughs> <laughs> and the more that I want to do music, hey, you look younger than me, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, the more I'm that afraid, the, I'm afraid up over it. <laughs> the more that I want to do music, the more that, you know, I think everyone has to kind of come to terms with the fact that you have to find a way to get compensated for the time that you're spending on making music. And I feel like a lot of people aren't really ready for that in some ways. <clears throat> um, but I'm all about you know, trying to be the person to kind of push my network of, of friends to do that. Of course. So um, how do you view that? How do you view making music as a producer and keeping a steady income coming in the door in whatever way you, you can? Um, how mandatory is that? And can you speak a little bit more about getting those beats off of the hard drive? Well, I'm, I am a hustler. I mean, and I'm a hustler, a businessman. I'm a, I'm a businessman. That's, that's all I've ever been. Like I said, I sold my first beat at 21. Um, I was running, you know, I was running beats through the hood, you know, selling the catch. So it's always been about, don't get me wrong. I love making music, but it's always been about making something off the music. Uh, yeah. That was my goal. Cause my mom didn't have a lot. She was sick. Uh, my dad wasn't around. My brothers wasn't around. So I had to figure out a way to get paid. So when I was DJing, I was doing tapes to uh to i was dubbing tapes of music and selling them in high school you know what i mean ten dollars mm -hmm. a tape or whatever so that part of it needs to never go away i think that uh since it's not so tangible people can't touch it anymore they think they they can't sell it you know what i mean it's like well my, you know i used to put my beat on something and pass it out you know okay well now you can put it on instagram or you can put it on youtube people can still hear it mm -hmm. you just need to like i said you just need to set up a business a business um infrastructure to where when people play your beats you get paid from it you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying or they'll get copyright infringement on their video and then you'll get paid from it whatever they make off of it and i don't advocate for that but at the end of the day get it cleared you know what i mean mm -hmm. so i am trying to instill that that mentality into my young community and even the old is that you can still make money off of this i remember five years ago people thought that the music business was over we can't make money anymore now if you're not doing shows you can't get paid well it felt like that but now companies because guess what we want to make money companies want to make money right 
Everybody mm-hmm. trying to get paid. Yep. So now companies are trying to incorporate so many digital imprints on everything you do that it, it, it is becoming abundant that you cannot put anything out. Trust me, I'm a YouTuber. I know. You mm-hmm. put, put something out, boom, YouTube will hit you up. That's somebody's stuff. They, they copyright and they shut your video down and that money goes to the person that, that you have that, uh, that oh, copyright we, infringement on. Did you know that? We know we know all about that on, on our stream on 3 exactly. Later. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, at the end of the day, it hurts sometimes, I think, because you're like, damn, I didn't even know that. Or, you know, somebody sampled something and you're like, oh, he didn't get it clear. But again, you got to realize that when it's hurting you, it's helping the person that made it. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So it doesn't make me mad. I mean, I got hit on my, my stream last week. I don't even know what happened. Yeah. They were like, I had something on there. And I'm like, what are you talking about? That was all original music. But again, I, I told them to cut it out. They didn't cut anything out. But they're looking. They're watching. So if they're watching, that means that if you put something out, you go to BMI, ASCAP, you get your stuff, your publishing done, you're going to get your money. You're going to mm. get paid. So don't be afraid to do it. I just think that a lot of producers don't know how to do it. So mm-hmm. I would tell any producer to go buy you some reading material. They got this book. It's called, I want to make sure I say it right. Uh, and I just don't know it off the top of my head because I read a lot of books. But it is called All You Need to Know About Music Business by Donald Passman. Mm-hmm. Go pick that book up. That book will teach you about royalties. It'll teach you about streaming, uh, streaming royalties. It'll teach you about everything you need to know about contracts and all that. Educate yourself. I'm going to help you out, but I'm not going to go through every line. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because yeah, yeah. I'm a firm believer that people need to help themselves in order to get to where they want to get to. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to give it to you for free. Now, I am going to create a service to where you can get your stuff heard, but I'm also going to do it in a way to where you're still going to have to put some lab work in. Mm-hmm. I also have a branding company. I had another one of my uh, one of my uh, subscribers, which is a family member now, reached out to me and said, hey, Elbow, I need an album cover, bro. I said, all right, I have a business. This is what I charge. I don't do it for free, but I tell mm-hmm. you what, the product you're going to get you're going to love because I'm a digital artist. That's what I've been doing for 15 years. Right. He sent me to work. We did it. Boom, bam. Oh, uh, 24 hours later, he had an album cover. He's thanking me constantly over and over again. So I don't just have music to offer. I don't just have advice to offer. I have opportunity to offer. Mm-hmm. And if you're willing to listen and you're willing to invest in yourself, then man, there's really no, no limits to where you could go and what you can do with your music. And that's what I'm trying to sell. And that's what I'm trying to preach. And uh, yeah, yeah, we trying to get across this year. We we need more voices like that. I mean, I think everybody looks at, you know, how they can sell the beats um, as a way to make money. But I think that there's so many other ways to get compensated through music making. And it's it's good to have reminders and people who are advocating for that 100 percent. Yeah. Um, You know, have you ever thought about or have you ever um, did any research about talking to those developers that you know and, and trying to make some sort of plug in yourself. Is that, is that on the horizon? That could be a, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've, I've definitely did that. Uh, trying to figure out what is it going to take? Uh, Cause I'm not a programmer, but uh, it, it is a, you know, it, it, there are some kits out there that you could use audio kit, actually audio kit, no pun intended has kits that mm. uh, they, they actually lend out to use some of their infrastructure to make, different type of stuff that you want to make it is a process yeah uh, hack attack uh did it uh and i thought that was great uh i think uh brand I'm, I'm sorry he needed a business uh they did it you know mm. they put out an app uh it is it is a long lengthy long process. process uh i don't think i'm there yet because mm. the way that i think and the things that i imagine I'm a, I'm gonna be living in a cardboard box. I keep telling y'all. Uh, so I have to try to throttle back on the because I don't want to just put out something that looks like something else. You know mm. what I mean? Like I'm an artist, so I can draw. I can do 3D graphics. So if it's gonna be something that's put out, I'm probably gonna do some of the uh, some of the stuff and the graphics and all that. Probably is gonna be done by me. That yeah. stuff takes a lot of time. You know what I mean? So I don't want to oversell myself and I don't want to overload myself because I do still have a full time job. Yeah. You know I mean? So that's right. that's the difficult part about this is that uh, a lot of my, you know, subscribers in the community, they, they, they want more of you. You know, mm. as you start to grow, you will start to realize that this could be very taxing on you. If yeah. You do not manage your time well. Yeah. And I had to learn that because it was mm-hmm. like, bam, bam, everybody want a piece of me. I'm like, Jesus, I can't, you know, reach out to everybody and help everybody. But mm. uh, you just got to be able to manage your time. And, and it's coming. You know, my goal, again, is to 2021, 2022, uh, really work towards being, um, 
you know, able to do this full time uh, with yeah. my side business, with my graphic stuff. And then with mm-hmm. this, uh, this idea I got coming up, uh, it is all about me doing this full time. That's my number one goal. Yeah. Well, more power to you, man. I mean, that's like, that's definitely one of the dreams uh, yeah. that I have there, you know, making yeah. music every day and, and, and getting good paycheck from it. Okay. What is right now, what is your number one DAW of choice, whether that's hardware or software? What are you rocking with? Number one? Man, I'm working with so much stuff, bro. How are you going to make me just pick one? Number one. It, it, but I, don't, I mean, it's hard for me to answer that. But if I had to say one, I would have to say reason because I know it. Okay. I mean, I could say Ableton, I could say them all because I work with them all. But reason, I'm going to say it just because it's, I'm going to give them their props. Okay. Okay. So they're trying. Okay. Um, similar question. This is like a desert island question. Mm-hmm. You're on a desert island, deserted island. <laughs> desert, deserted. Okay. Desert, a deserted uh, de- desert island. Yeah. Um, and you could only take one thing to make some music. Is it going to be software or is it going to be hardware? Software or hardware? One thing, huh? It'll be hardware. The Kai Force. There we go. And here we go. You ready? Mm-hmm. Quantization? Question mark. That's the question. Quantization? Mm-hmm. Too much. 808s or kicks? Put them in a the bed together. You good? Here's another one. Loop kits? Inspiration. Where do you see? It could be even where do you see your stream in the next five years? But where do you see uh, the beat maker of 2026? You talking about for me, or you just talking about period? either for you or for just the community um, where you see things headed in the future. A coalition of of dope ass producers that can all say that they've collaborated with Elbow Media Studios and and they've become better and they've become fruitful and and they've sold music and they're, they're successful. There we go. Thank you. Um, so we could wrap it up. And again, I, I really appreciate you taking uh, time out of your day just to have this conversation. Um, again, everybody who watched this, um, you could check out Elbow Media Studios on YouTube. Um, as you can see, Marcus is a great guy, easy to talk to. Um, again, make sure you, you watch the stream and join in on the chat. All right, man. Perfect. Appreciate you having me on, brother, man. I wish you all guys all success in the world. Thanks a lot, man. Stay in touch, bro. Yeah, keep it up, man. Have a good one. 100.